With the premiere of Rings of Power Season 2 inching closer and closer, let's look at some of the reviews. Hi, I'm Will, I'm the host of The Bald Book Geek, and like sub, do the usual, I suppose, but also if you want early access and exclusive content, please consider joining my Patreon or becoming a channel member. So let's look at these reviews of this show. <laughs> Let's talk about the current reviews of the Rings of Power. Let's talk about what's being said and what's actually happening. And it's quite interesting to watch these reviews happen in real time. To quote The Guardian, the Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power Season 2 review needs more, needs to remember it's a drama. Then you have Variety, the Rings of Power makes the Lord of the Rings a boring slog into lifeless Earth, into a lifeless Middle Earth. And then you have countless other reviews. The Rings of Power Season 2 debuts the truly shocking scores on Rotten Tomatoes. But how Rotten Tomatoes works is uh, literally uh, you can give it a free and they kind of round up the number. So Rotten Tomatoes is not a reliable metric overall. And there's a whole thing with that sh uh, with that one. A lot of the reviews are pointing out the same criticism I have of Season 1. The writing is awful. It, it's absolutely awful. Boring, lifeless, and ultimately just really shows. Uh, the Telegraph review made me laugh. This is behind a paywall. But the Rings of Power review, proof that money can't buy magic. Garish and disrespectful towards J.R. Tolkien's writing, the second season of Prime Video's Lord of the Rings prequel will leave fans cold. I mean, this is ultimately the thing. My experience with this show is I wanted it to be epic. I wanted it to be amazing. And it wasn't. It wasn't epic. It wasn't amazing. It was fast travel across Middle Earth, derivative dialogue, derivative scenes, and a few insiders are saying that what they, the premiere of, they went to a couple of screenings, a friend of mine said people walked out. People walked out of the screening after episode one. It was not full at the end. My issues with the show have always been the writing, and it's funny how the shields on Twitter are just crying about these reviews, but they're so desperate to make the show credible, when really they make up a very small but vocal minority of people. This show has failed for Amazon, and they're banking to, on this show, and they're desperately trying with Rings of Power uh, to make it what Game of Thrones was. The difference being is that Game of Thrones started out as a fantastic show and house of the dragon is far superior to rings of power in terms of storytelling writing characterization set design construction yeah rings of power feels lifeless and empty it's not a particularly good show and that's ultimately the thing season one as my previous recap of it I pointed out it was lifeless, with bland dialogue, poor editing, basic errors. The show is just not good. <laughs> and no amount of guilt-treeping people on the internet will make it good. One of the comments on these, it was all boring slog from season one onwards. Yes, it was. It was boring. And that's the problem. Lord of the Rings is a pinnacle of fantasy. It is the granddaddy to modern fantasy. And without J.R.R. Tolkien, your world would none of these terrible YA novels would exist. <laughs> the Wheel of Time has also proven to be a less than stellar production for Amazon, and destroying um, the source material to tell this weird story that didn't quite work. And that show, ironically, does look better in parts than Rings of Power, even though it's got a lot less budget. The writing will always be my main criticism. The dialogue, it's cringy, it's not well handled, and that's ultimately its problem. Amazon are contracted to make five seasons of this show. They've cancelled shows to fund it. And the problem with that is, if the leaks are true, and this ends with the creation of the One Ring, what are they going to do for three more years? Another one, USA Today, points out and this is actually a very good review. Lord of the Rings uh, is beautiful, but empty in season two. Season one was an outlandishly expensive Amazon Prime series. It had a lot going for it. You can tell that they tried. I disagree with that one. But 
They do kind of couch this article with only a handful of writings from J.R. Tolkien from the Lord of the Rings appendees to tell a story, which is true. They don't have the rights to the actual story, they have the appendices, which is ridiculous. But you could make a very good series out of that, I'm sure of it, with the right people. Here, this article on USA Today points out the first season obviously required a lot of setup, and I gave J.D. Payne and McCain a lot of leeway to get their footing and create a series that, that distinct, that's distinct from the Peter Jackson films that have so permeated popular culture. But by the time the series ended with a big reveal, the Sauron was hiding in plain sight all along. Dun dun dun! Unfortunately, all the promise was utterly wasted on a confusing, directless, and emotionally bankrupt second season of Rings of Power. Streaming Thursday, uh, one, and, one and a half out of four. If season one was a lavish scroll through Middle Earth, season two gallops away, leaving many of the important details character development behind. I'm trying to think if there was any character development. I mean, the whole story is not well handled and it just collapses on itself. Nothing happened, it was fast travel around Middle Earth, nothing more. Let's be honest. The people that I know, that I trust, have seen, have been at screenings, have all said the same thing. It was season one with moodier lighting and slightly upped the special effects games and some of the costumes look better. But it felt the same, derivative, flat, delivery of dialogue, and to quote my friend here, uh, dialogue that felt so derivative of the books and everything else, lifting lines and sections from those. They condensed the timeline in the Lord of the Rings movies for sake of storytelling. Here, I'm pretty convinced they condensed the timeline because of heavy reshoots and a lot left on the cutting room floor, allegedly just to tell the story as quickly as possible, to jump to the bits with action. Season 2 is far more action-based and far more, far more, um, lots of battles and a lot more visual, and apparently it feels more like they're going down the Game of Thrones direction with this season. So we'll see what happens. I don't hold out much hope, but I would love something amazing to come out of this derivative, derivative pile of horse poop. That's being really honest. And as someone points out with Rotten Tomatoes, it reduces it to a binary score of good or bad. If 100% of critics gave it 3 out of 5 stars, Rotten Tomatoes score would be 100%. This hurts media. It's, it, it's that simple. It hurts media that is polarising instead of favours source material that is meh, not bad. So who knows what's going to come out of this, but to see the critics and mainstream media turn on the show, are they instaphobes? Are they ists and phobes for not liking the show? Because that's been my comment section on those videos. Simple. Let's be honest here. It's funny how Twitter is reacting and the shill accounts are reacting to this mess. So we'll see what happens and we'll go from there. And I will be posting my review of the first few episodes very soon. So I hope you guys like this. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.